Hey guys and gals, March 16th, 2023. Introductions aside, I'm just going to get to today's news articles. We have a ton to go through, and I'm going to try to keep this uh, somewhat consistent, going through several different topics with affiliated news articles related. So hang on, we have a lot to get through, and then hopefully by the end of this, you're a much more educated uh, individual about your planet, and the home that you live on. So let's get into it. Brazilian researchers find terrifying plastic rocks on a remote island. Look at this. So essentially, the geology of Brazil's volcanic Trindad Islands has fascinated scientists for years, but the discovery of rocks made from plastic debris in a remote turtle refuge is sparking alarm. Melted plastic has become intertwined with the rocks in the island, located about 700 miles from the eastern state of Espirito Santo, which researchers say is evidence of humans' growing influence. This is new and terrifying at the same time because pollution has reached geology. Okay, again, guys, I took geology in college, to, so to see this is uh, bizarre, alien-like. I mean, look at that. We identified pollution mainly comes from fishing nets, which is very common debris on the Trinidad Island beaches, I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, the nets are dragged by marine currents and accumulate on the beach when the temperature rises. This plastic melts and becomes embedded with the beach's natural material. The place where we found these samples of plastic is permanently preserved in the area in Brazil near the place where turtles lay their eggs. We talk so much about the Anthropocene, and this is it, okay? The pollution, the garbage in the sea, and the plastic dump incorrectly in the oceans is becoming geologic material preserved in Earth's geological records so when we're long gone next century um there will be cars and plastic debris melded into the geologic history of our planet okay that's happening it accumulates and warm and the warms wa the warm waters melt it into the rocks bizarre okay let's keep on this theme Arctic ice has seen an irreversible thinning since 2007, study says. New research suggests that the decline was a fundamental change unlikely to be reversed this century and perhaps proof that the planet has passed an alarming climactic tipping point. Hmm. Don't we know it? I'm going to propose some ideas uh, maybe here in a moment. Arctic sea ice has declined dramatically since 2007 and it has never reco recovered. Okay. This isn't, this isn't the ozone layer where we recover it. No, that's not recovering, and this is not recovering. New research suggests the loss is fundamentally, fundamental change unlikely to be reversed this century, if ever. Perhaps proof of the sort of climate tipping point that scientists have warned the planet could pass as it warms. The conclusion comes from three decades of data on the age and thickness of the ice. In the years since, the data shows that the Arctic has reached a new regime, one that brings in with it a trend towards ice cover that is much thinner and younger than it has been before 2007. They link the change to rising ocean temperatures in the rapidly warming Arctic driven by human emissions of greenhouse gases. Our analysis demonstrates the long-lasting impact of climate change in Arctic sea ice, they wrote in journal Nature. And that's not to say that the Arctic ice is knocked out completely, but that it cannot recover. You're in a new situation, a new equilibrium where you can't easily get back to where you were. The 5.64 million square miles of ice cover observed on March 6th was the fifth smallest on record. That date is six days earlier than average for the annual Arctic minimum. So watching this graph here, we are dipping into, yes, very terrifying territory here soon okay you get it arctic climate modeling is actually too conservative says this new research climate models used by the united nations ipcc and others project climate change are not accurately reflecting what the arctic's future will be researchers at the university of gothenburg argue that the rate of warming will be much faster than projected <clears throat> due to the arctic's Sea ice cover and its harsh climate, relatively few observations are made in that part of the world. This means that climate models used for projecting the future of the Arctic have not been calibrated to the same extent there as in other parts of the world. This is 
frightening, terrifying, and unexpected all at the same time. I'm not going to continue this. I mean, you just need to know we need a climate model that is tailored to the Arctic. In general, you can't use the same model for the entire planet as conditions vary considerably. A better idea would be to create a specific model for the Arctic that correctly factors in the processing occurring in the Arctic oceans and the surrounding land areas. Duh. Okay. Are we thinking, are we thinking guys that uh, a recession brings a loss of aerosol uh, and because of lack of shipping and um, modern industrial civilization, aerosols fall, we warm up, El Nino kicks in and we're looking at like, I don't know, global average 1.6, 1.7. Maybe that's a specific number either way we go above the threshold of 1.5 like like several notches above it potentiality okay and we're, we're in uncharted territory here moving forward biden warns people that they can't deny climate change the wrath of mother nature and a whole generation is damned so he said mother nature's wrath was evident in the past two years he gave a dire warning talking about a new interview. He saw this guy's on the Daily Show. He said people between the ages of 18 and 35, I'm 34, motivated him to sign off on the Inflation Reduction Act. They've had enough of it, he says. They showed up to vote in the last two elections of the concerns of the environment. Uh, and if we don't keep, the president warned younger generations would have no future. Younger generations would have no future to look forward to if we didn't act on climate change. If we don't keep the temperature going from above 1.5 degrees Celsius raised, then we're in real trouble. Too late. We, we already are. The whole generation is damned. That's not hyperbole. Really, truly in trouble, he claimed. Earlier this year, he said uh, it was a bigger threat than human to humanity than nuclear war. If we don't stay under 1.5, we're going to have a real problem. It's the single most existential existential threat to humanity we've ever faced, including nuclear weapons, he said at a Democratic uh, National Committee fundraiser. Yeah. Okay, and then he signed off. Half of new auto sales have to be electric. We'll be, uh, we'll be living in pure hell by then. Um, planet in the crosshairs. I'm just repeating this. UN chief demands rapid emission cuts. If anybody didn't see my last video called mass my global mass migration by 2030 the heading nations to serve up called for scientists to serve up cold hard facts uh yeah how about the arctic huh and the new report uh could not come at a more pivotal time our world is at a crossroads our planet is in the crosshairs we are nearing the point of no return of overshooting the internationally agreed limit of 1.5 that threshold agreed eight years ago was measured against averages during the pre-industrial times has become a yardstick blah 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 we're going to hell next article scientists confirm global floods and droughts worsened by climate change okay it's okay guys this whole thing isn't about climate change i'm, I'm getting into some other subjects here in a moment the intensity has been in rainfall has sharply increased over the past 20 years according to a study published monday these aren't merely tough weather events. They're leading to extremes such as crop failure, infrastructure damage, and even humanitarian crisis. The big picture on water comes from a data pair known as satellites of GRACE, or Gravity Recovery and Climate Experiment, that were used to measure changes in Earth's water storage. It's incredible now we can monitor the pulse of the continental water from outer space, says a bioclimatologist at the University of California, Los Angeles. I have a feeling when future generations look back and try to determine humanity really begin to understand the planet as a whole, this will be one of the studies highlighted. Highlighted. Wow. The research says the data confirms that both the frequency and intensity of rainfall and droughts are increasing due to the burning of fossil fuels. I was surprised to see how well correlated the global intensity was with global mean temperatures. You get this by now, guys? Have you heard enough of this? Okay, you can go through this yourself. Wetter extremes, wetter will be wetter, and the dry extremes will get drier. We're going into extreme world dubbed weather whiplashing between extreme drought and unprecedented flooding has become common. Um, okay, we can use flood waters to replenish aquifers, improving health of agricultural soil so it can absorb better water and store more carbon, blah, blah, blah. Okay, Biden, again, not a drill, not a drill. Biden says generation damned if we don't fix climate change. Okay, just rehashing that article from earlier. All right. 
because the global ecosystems are at risk of losing global carbon storage, from Manga Bay study says. Landscapes are showing signs of losing their ability to absorb the amount of carbon they could once could, a new study revealed. So the study reviewed the productivity of carbon storage of different ecosystems between 1981 and 2018, finding that many fluctuated greatly and were at risk of turning into permanent scrubland. Researchers identified a concerning spiraling effect. Have I said enough buzzwords today? In which landscapes absorb less carbon and in turn worsen climate change, which then destabilizes additional landscapes and puts them at higher risk of turning into scrubland. So several regions in the world are at risk of losing... the ability to store carbon. Okay. That could pose a serious obstacle against the fight against climate change. The first time we've demonstrated that certain regions of the world might be reaching tipping points and lose an in- ability to host significantly forced land and absorb significant amounts of carbon. No bueno. Okay. Already we're at several, we're at the precipice of a multitude of tipping points, not to mention war. And that's my next subject. Taiwan unveils first portable attack drone amid rising tensions with China. Taiwan's 23.5 million people live under constant threat of invasion by China. And they unveiled their first portable attack drone on Tuesday, an unmanned um, aerial vehicle similar to the U.S. model used in Ukraine's fight against Russia. Okay, saber rattling. It's lightweight and portable. It's like a big grenade that can fly. It's affecting at attacking targets near our shores. All right, they'll just use this against the boats, I guess, that are coming in. Because Honduras is teaming up with China, pressuring Taiwan ahead of U.S. trip. M- m- countries are, are tallying up with each other. I'm not going to read this, but essentially uh, we're all f- joining sides. Meanwhile, the U.S. unveils a mutant missile that morphs in the air. The mutant missile will morph midair, allowing it to chase down targets more efficiently. I don't even know what this is. Okay, a twisting mutant missile. A twisting mutant missile. Put that in your coffee. To blow fast-moving targets out of the air. Missile launched from a jet would have an articulated head that could help twist that could twist to help it change direction and hit targets. Yeah, who cares about the Arctic or, you know habitat for millions of humans we need twisting missiles okay how about you i'm not going to say anything mean some of the test footage makes it look like a missile nose cone strapped to a slinky all right this is what we're researching this is where our money goes let me just watch this that's yeah, long i'm not gonna i'm not gonna go through this whole thing but i guess you could see it let's see here what? Never seen anything like that. What the hell? It must do that in a fraction of a second. That's insane. That is insane. Okay, there's a lot of firsts happening this century. A lot of firsts. Okay, so you could drop it out of the sky. And then it'll come up to another... Oh, is this what we're going to use against the hypersonic missiles? Is this what we're going to do? Shoot a net at them? That's bizarre. Okay, moving on. This bank failure fiasco this week, it's like every week, what's 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 happening this week? A drone, banks, balloons, make it stop. Let's look at the history of them. So relatively calm until 2008, we all knew, Indie Bank, Colonial Bank, um... Specialized in Alt-A mortgages, loans made to people with good credit scores, but no proven in- income or assets. And then what happened just now, okay, a wave of bank casualties followed the global financial crisis. You could see all these banks collapsing, and that brings us to today. Um, Signature 89, Silicon 175, and WAMU. Since 2001, there have been 563 bank failures. Yeah, systems working so well. So well. Signature Bank failed two days later, making it the third largest meltdown ever, and Silvergate Capital has amounts in wind-down business. Okay, it's going to send a ripple effect. Here's a list of them. Top 20 bank failures over the past two decades. Yep, good times. All right, let's get over to food. 
food brands struggling to weather the poly crisis unleashed by war and climate change, climate-induced failures and war uh, fueled energy problems creating crisis for sector. Only 26% of the world's t 350 top ranked food companies have set holistic time bound sustainability targets. Okay. Only 26% have even mentioned, okay, tried to rein in, you know, industrial capitalism. Can't change the system. You think your grocery bill is high now? Just wait. From MSN, a massive corporate merger could send uh, prices skyrocketing because Kroger, okay, I hate Kroger, finalizing $25 billion deal to acquire its jumbo size competitor Albertsons with their 5,000 stores. So if we couldn't have a more dystopian and uh, capitalist nightmare to live in, Every single company is merging, including our grocery, including our grocery stores. Okay, that's why sci-fi writer visiting Utah says, forget Mars and get all hands on deck for climate change. Then after conservation, these projects propose to bring in more water to the Great Salt Lake. Yes, study them? Sure, why not? Um, in the next hundred years, the oceans will rise precipitously. You know, water will be more scarce, especially in arid places like Utah, forest fires prevalent, species will die off. It'll just be like, it'll be a complete wreck, shithole world by 2030 at our rate. Civilization as we know it is at risk, so don't panic and get to work, blah. This writer, Kim Stanley Robinson, cynicism is a fake sophistication. It's clumsy and stupid and mean. The way to be cool is to be optimistic, maybe angrily optimistic. Oh, okay, is that so? He'll speak at this thing. He's been awarded uh, for his series and science fiction, Colonizing Mars. I think he wrote that Mars book, but he says it's irrelevant to us now. Um, the novels 2312, New York 2040, The Ministry of the Future. That's what he wrote. All features humans coming up with massive engineering projects. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. All right, I don't need to read this. We're not doing anything. Let's get on to some fun news, right? Get off the war, famine, and four horsemen ride. Your heartbeat shapes your perception of time, study finds. Right now, your brain is keeping track of passage of time without your awareness letting you focus on better things like reading this story and watching this channel. This happens auto automatically, but not consistently. The brain's perception of time can fluctuate with some moments seeming to stretch or shrink relative to each objective second. While these wrinkles in time may be distortions of reality, technically they aren't all in your head. According to a stu new study, some originate in your heart. Heartbeats set the pace for time perception, says a University of Psychology professor Adam Anderson, illustrating the key role of heartbeat uh, helping keep us track of time. Time is a dimension of the universe and a core basis of our experience of self. Our research shows that the moment-to-moment -moment experience of time is synchronized and changes with the length of a heartbeat. These variations in time or temporal wrinkles are normal, they say, and may be adaptive. They found that virtual reality train rides seemed to last longer for passengers when the simulated trains were more crowded. I mean, this is really far out stuff, guys. Um, I don't need to read this whole thing, but I mean, basically we're, our sense of time is fluctuating. A pure influence of a heart, of the heart from beat to beat helps create a sense of, t sense of time. Nuts. It's okay. You can get a smart watch, you know, forget Siri, forget Google. You can get chat GPT on a Raspberry Pi on your wrist. Okay. So you can look down and ask anything you want. Kind of complicated, very, uh, it's kind of George Jetson-y looking, but it's obviously primitive. Somebody's going to take this idea and put it full, but I mean, it's only a matter of time. I would say months, weeks. Someone's going to, some big company's going to, you know, build a thing for your arm. Okay. Luckily, you can sober up real quick. Totally random here. New drug counteracts and toxin rapidly sobering up drunk mice. Using the hormone fibro, fibroblast growth factor 21, FG21, increases alertness in the brain. A single jab of this stuff, fighting against certain effects of intoxication, such as drowsiness and lack of coordination, without fundamentally changing how alcohol is broken in the body. So the hormone, the liver produces this hormone in both mice and humans. They can apply to us too. 
It could rouse people from suffering alcohol poisoning or extreme drunkenness. I haven't, I haven't drank, drank in days, actually. We found that the liver is not only involved in metabolic, metabolism, metabolizing alcohol, but also sends hormonal signals to the brain to protect it against harmful effects of intoxication. Cool. Might need to have a dose of these in case I get trashed. Scientific American. Unstable moon may be obliterating alien life across the universe. Collisions between moons and planets may be a regular danger for, for possible exist, extraterrestrial life. So, the moon crashing to Earth may sound like an unrealistic doomsday scenario or stuff of sci-fi, but they say in the Journal of Monthly Notices, the Royal Astronomical Society uses computer simulations to show that collisions between exoplanets and their moons may actually be a regular occurrence, which could be disastrous, okay? So, this is happening. We know that moons in our own solar system, so naturally we expect to see moons and exoplanets. So, therefore, they might be colliding into the gravity rules, interactions. You know, if the, if the trade-offs were to continue long enough, the the, the moon could eventually get, become unbound from Earth. We'll be long gone, but, you know, it's kind of interesting. Where are the aliens? Maybe they got like, crushed by moons. But we discovered an underwater taller mountain taller than the Burj Khalifa. Okay. The world's first uncrewed ocean mapping mission. Pretty cool. This boat, the Sail Drone Surveyor SD-1200, largest uncrewed ocean mapping vessel in the world, has discovered unidentified seamount greater than the Earth's tallest building. Given that just 5% of the, e the seas have been explored, you know, it's kind of neat. Why do we need to explore the oceans? I don't know. To explore, to learn? Because it's our planet? Why not? Okay. This is the future of ocean mapping. We'll just send out all these boats while the planet is uh, being destroyed. I just moved away from Fayetteville, Arkansas. I think about the place regularly because it has a mm -hmm, kind of an interesting vibe. And Tyson will close poultry plants in Virginia and Arkansas to employ more than 1,600 because they want a streamlined business, apparently, from Van Buren, Arkansas, which is a kind of a shithole. Um, the Springdale, Arkansas Space Company, is near where I just moved away from, will move all these people. You guys don't care about this. Neither do I. And last but not least, since we live in a dystopian nightmare and mm, what you value is doesn't matter and uh, money's given to billionaires and the rest of us has turned into atomized people and everything just sucks. I think it's one of the worst times to be alive. This is our fashion. Okay. This is what we've been degraded to. This is what we've been degraded to. Okay. <clears throat> she played a transgender actor on euphoria and she made an Instagram post and it's got liked more than 2 million times. For the fresh, off-the-wall fall winter 2023 runway. Okay. Just walk around without a shirt. There you go. Fashion. There you go. Self-expression, self-love, and self-definition. Get woke. Okay. All right. Ask intimate questions. All right. Get All right. That's, that's fashion now. That's what we've been deduced to. All this, all this stuff, oceans, Arctic runaway, uh, war, you know, food crisis, uh, banks failing, and we just have fashion with where you put a, a leaf, I mean, a, a feather on your chest. Okay, that's what we've arrived to. So I'll, I'll close with this on the screen. Okay, that's where we're at. Okie doke. It's been fun reporting. Thanks for tuning in. Hit like and subscribe. Consider donating to support this channel. I do it all out of my own pocket, mostly. And you guys have a good weekend. I'll talk to you later. See ya.